Okay, welcome back folks. In this next series of tutorials, we're going to talk about how to use VBA to programmatically control pivot tables. And the idea here is that pivot tables are already very powerful automated tools that we can use. They sort of take advantage of uh, some really nice features to do summary statistics, to do filtering, to do sorting, you could do all that on the fly in a very automated way. So all we're going to try to do now is with VBA is we're going to try to sort of automate the automation. So add a lot of power by just doing a little bit of code to set up a pivot table and then programmatically uh, you know, slice and dice it. So we can change the rows, we can change the columns, we can change the filters all on the fly. So that way someone doesn't really know how to need to know how to use pivot tables. So maybe we have a user that doesn't want to take the time to learn. You just give them a couple buttons and it configures a pivot table uh, and gives them exactly what they want to see. Or you find yourself in a situation as an analyst where you're using pivot tables all the time but you have to you know constantly change the filters maybe to accommodate different date ranges or different uh, subfields and you just you know it becomes a lot of mouse clicking to continually configure the pivot table so now you're going to use VBA to do it for you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to create a pivot table. So I have my data here. Uh, and this raw data is similar to what you saw earlier. I've got ID, flight date, uh, I've got unique airline. Uh, I've trimmed out some superfluous data and I just have origin, uh, destination, and I added in packs here which uh, shows the number of passengers. This is uh, the delay departure in minutes and this is whether that delay was over 15 arrival departure in minutes and etc. I've also taken a, uh, a moment to add a pivot worksheet. So this is where my pivot table is actually going to live. Uh, one is created and I have a summary uh, data here. So as we make a pivot table later in this series of tutorials, we'll copy the pivot table and we'll paste it in summary. And pack states uh, is something that, that we're going to look at a little bit later. So I have my raw data. So let's go ahead and get started. So I bring up my IDE. I'm going to go ahead and make a new module. And I'm going to go ahead and start uh, looking at um, my, proce my procedure to make the pivot table. So I'm going to go ahead and use a procedure here. I'm going to call it setup pivot. And we're going to have to define a couple things up front that we're going to need. So the first one is going to be the pivot table itself. That's an Excel uh, object. And then we're going to do something called a PT cache. So the pivot cache is a database that's underneath of the pivot table. So the pivot table is what you see, but beneath it, sort of as the, the data, data store, is a pivot cache. So you might be asking yourself, well, I thought the pivot table is using the raw data. It is. But what happens is Excel needs to make a copy of this data, so it makes a copy of this and it puts it in something called the pivot cache. And that's what it's going to use uh, to create and sort of manipulate the pivot table. I'm also going to go ahead and define some worksheets here. So WSD is worksheet data. We're going to make that a worksheet. That's going to be my uh, worksheet with the data. I'm going to also define my pivot uh, PT output. And I think that's all we're going to need for now. I am also going to make a range object. Uh, range object we're going to need a little bit later. So now I'm going to go ahead and the first thing that you're going to want to do is we'll actually define our worksheet objects. And because it's an object, I need to use the set function. So that's my raw data. So the first thing you want to do is clean up any existing pivot tables that are laying around. The reason we do this is if you try to make a pivot table on top of a pivot table, you're going to cause problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for each uh, PTS pivot tables in PT output 
dot pivot tables we're going to do this so this is going to iterate over all the pivot tables that are associated with this worksheet which is PT output which is defined up here that's my pivot sheet if there's not any pivot tables then this code is just going to skip but for each one we want to do table range to clear so that's going to eliminate uh, any existing pivot tables the next thing we have to do is find the range of our data what do I mean by that well this data set is set now it's got um, you know, it goes over I believe to Q and then it goes down quite a ways to 152 and some change but you can imagine that this data set uh, in reality is going to change week to week or month to month so you know in the summertime maybe there's more flights so this data set's going to grow it's going to shrink and what we want is when we make a pivot table we want it to be robust enough to handle varying sizes in the data uh, we could certainly hard code this to some giant value but then the pivot tables have a lot of blanks so we want to be able to programmatically determine the size of this uh, when we make it so we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some procedures uh, some functionality to do that So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable here called final row. And I'm going to define it as a long. The reason we're going to use long is because, as you can remember from our intro class, a uh, standard integer only goes up to th either from negative 32k up to positive 32k. So it's not going to be long enough to accommodate you know, a, a 152,000 rows. Uh, so I've defined both row and column as long here. And then to find the final row, we're going to use um, I'm going to look into my uh, worksheet with the data. I'm going to go into cells, and I'm going to look in application rows count in the first column, and I'm going to use this word which is end x l Excel up dot row. And what this does is it goes of all possible rows in the first columns, it goes to the bottom and it determines what that row is. So this is equivalent code to doing sort of a control shift end or control shift down arrow. And the, I just found this by doing some research into the MSDM website and the internet. Uh, and this is going to return to final row. And then the final column is going to be similar and it is WSD dot cells and here um, we look in the first column we do application our first row we do application columns uh, count and we do dot end again this we time we give it the XL to left and then column so this is equivalent of doing a control shift right arrow and it will give you that column number. So just to make sure, let's do debug, let's do print, and we'll do last row equals uh, final row, and we'll do debug print uh, last column, and we'll do final column. And let's go ahead and see how that works. Okay, so I, I ran that. I got setup pivot going. Uh, if I look back in here to my pivot, I've got nothing yet because you know nothing's created. If anything, it just wiped away. But since I didn't have anything there, this code didn't do anything. And this code sort of shows me my last column and last row, which is what I want. So now we're ready to proceed with actually selecting the data. Um, so I'm going to go WSD dot select. Go select my worksheet. And I'm going to set my P range, which is a temporary range object, equal to WSD.range. And I'm going to go into cells 1, 1, which is the upper left cell, which is A1 in that. And I'm going to go down for my lower right to cells final row, comma, final column. So now I've just selected on my worksheet, you know, on my raw data feed, so on my, our uh, sheet. So on this one, I'm going from A1 all the way down. To this bottom right corner. 
That's what this code does here. And I'm going to get go ahead and, and define that entire range. I'm going to go ahead and give that range a name. I'm going to call it flight data. And now I'm ready to go ahead and sort of set the pivot table up. So I'm going to set up uh, my pivot table cache. So I set the pivot table cache, which I defined, watch the spelling there. I'm going to set one, that one up to active workbook, pivot caches, uh, create, and now I've got to give it some stuff. Source type equals Excel database. I'm going to drop down and my source data is going to equal my flight data which is the range object of the that I have selected and my version is going to equal Excel pivot table version 12. So now that I have my uh, pivot table cache, I'm ready to go ahead and create the pivot table. And I set my PT equal to pivot table cache. Uh, my telesense kicks in, which is good. Create pivot table and table destination. I'm going to set that on PT output, which is my output. Remember, PT output is my pivot worksheet. And I want to put that in cells 1, 1, which is alpha 1. And table name equals to, I'm going to call it flight to pivot. Close out that. And just to make this a little bit more readable, I'm going to do this right here. And the last thing we need to do is we need to sort of define uh, an initial configuration. And we're going to set PT up to manual update. What this does is this allows us to manipulate the table uh, programmatically. And now we need to add some fields. So I'm going to do PT add fields and I'm going to add some row fields and it's going to be equal to for now I'm just going to use unique carrier. So unique carrier if you remember was this so my row field for my pivot table is going to be unique carrier. I'm not going to do anything else with columns or my data fields at this time. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off my manual update. So this should have been equal to true actually. And this needs to be false. And we'll see if this works. All right, so something happened there. I go to my pivot table uh, sheet, and there it is. So here's my pivot table. You can see how it defined it, set it up, and it has my unique carrier um, as the uh, default sort of row field. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this whole thing. Well, actually, we don't need, really need to worry about it, but let's say that I have a bunch of stuff in here, and kind of set this up and I'm working with it. If I run this code again, it's going to reset my pivot table to a starting state. And that's what you want. You want to always be able to kind of go back to an initial state before you do your analysis and um, kind of have a good starting base. 
So now this covers uh, and sort of completes how to set up a pivot table. In the next series of videos, I'm going to show you how to use VBA to go ahead and start um, configuring the pivot table by changing the row labels or the column labels and the, the data labels um, inside the table itself.